Hey, and welcome to Matt and Jess TV. I'm Matt Roast here with Jessica Bun Bun. This is our interview with the Vampire Season 2, Episode 7, Reaction and Review. If our enthusiasm is a little bit cranked down at the start of this video, let's be honest, you probably watched the episode. And with that, you probably know why. This is a very difficult, gut-punching, tear-inducing hour of television, everybody. This was an incredibly hard episode for me to watch. I mean, I knew it was coming, but I'm so attached to Louis and Claudia, they are my favorites, uh, that I I really tried to prepare myself going into this episode for what I knew was coming, but nothing prepared me for this. I mean, it was it was so hard to watch. And I, I walked out of this episode being like, I hated it. I hated everything <laughs> about it, but I actually didn't hate anything about it. The What I just felt was just such sadness and just such anger about what was happening to Louis and Claudia, you know, yeah, they broke the vampire laws, but they don't deserve to die for this. And it was just, I had a really hard time getting through this episode, but I will say it was beautifully written. The performances were amazing. I mean, they made me feel all these things. It needs to be included on what I want to call in my head, the, you know, Matt gets sad playlist of things that are incredibly well done, but I have to be in a very specific mood in order to rewatch them. It's similar to the Brendan Fraser arc on Scrubs, or like there's a couple of video games, there's an episode of The Leftovers where they're all just so beautifully crafted and well put together. But I don't think I can watch this episode again anytime soon, just because the final few minutes of it are just so difficult and painful and gut wrenching. I mean, it is as wonderfully executed as I can imagine. I will, I'll start here with the full disclosure. You know, we we've said in the past year, Jess has read the Anne Rice book. I mean, but it was a long time ago. I barely remember it, but I've seen the movie. I have not seen the movie. I have not read the book. I was really lucky in the sense that I did not know that was that was coming back at the end of last week. That was able to be unspoiled for me. And oh boy, but I knew that Claudia was going to die at some point. That was just something that kind of slipped through the cracks when you're covering a show like this. Inevitably, certain things are going to come out. But I, I didn't know how it was going to happen. This was so much worse than I could have ever imagined when it comes to just how painful and how devastating it was. Yeah, I mean them on stage and them not being able to speak their ankles being cut they can't walk they can't defend themselves nothing like i just felt so much anger over it that i was you know this is supposed to be a trial of course it's not a fair trial they're just looking to kill them and they're just looking to get a show out of it and have yeah. their regulars cheering them on while they're doing it so that they feel like they're justified in what is happening we're going to try to piece together everything, like all the individual <laughs> moments that stand out here. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about what's coming on the other side of this for Louis and Armand, because the show does go on as difficult as that feels right now. I feel like I'm just stuck in molasses, unable to move forward. Yeah, I mean, the loss of Claudia. I mean, there's no women left on the show, which, mm -hmm. you know, is kind of a drag for me. I, I really liked having Claudia there, but we'll see how they go forward. Again, like we haven't, we don't really know anything that's happening past this. So everything that we're just going to be talking about are going to be theories yeah. for us. So, you know, don't spoil it for us if you guys <laughs> haven't read the books. And mm -hmm. you never know anyway ways with TV. A lot of times they change things. We're covering House of the Dragon right now, and they just made a huge change in the premiere yeah. from the book. So you never know what direction they're going to decide to go in. Well, if you guys want to go in the direction of supporting us further here, <laughs> smash that like button. Nice. And also, thank you very much. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel because we do have more interview with the vampire coverage coming. The finale mm -hmm. is not that far away. And then we have an impossibly long wait until whenever season three happens, provided it does. I feel like it's pretty much a sure thing to get renewed. Oh, for sure. And also follow us over on our Patreon. We do have live streams with one coming up tomorrow, actually, on yeah. Monday night, um, where we're going to be talking all about Interview the Vampire. You guys can talk to us, ask us your questions about the show. We can talk to you guys, answer your questions about the show, and it helps support the channel. So thank you so much to 
everyone who has joined our Patreon. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we really, really do. Okay, I think we should just start here. But the, the, the question that's really on my mind, and I got to get this also off my chest. How does Armand and Louie fix this? Because it's just the situation after watching this, after seeing Louie be walked away, locked away. I would never speak to this person again. I would go to the other side of the world. Like, what the heck, man? Yeah, it was... I don't know how they got to the other side of this. I think part of it is what Lestat was saying in his speech, where he was talking to the audience member about loneliness and vampire loneliness being very different, deep. Mm -hmm. It's an eternity. It never ends. It's a much smaller group of vampires and people that you can connect to where, you know, humans is like, you know, billions of us. So for them, the loneliness really hits them, you know, in a space that we just can't fathom. And we even saw that with the audience member, they're starting, you know, sobbing and how difficult it is. And I think here with Louis and Armand, Louis, part of this just might be like, well, the pool of vampires is tiny. If I don't get past this and I don't forgive him and I don't look at the the good things he tried to do to fix the situation, then I'm just alone. I don't have Claudia anymore. You know, I'm not with Lestat. So I'm, you know, the coven's not going to take me. Me and Claudia search for other vampires with four years we found one she threw herself in the fire like there's just nobody here so if i don't fix things with armand then what what happens to me but it could also be you know listen armand was in a tough situation they were like okay we're gonna kill you and them or we're just gonna kill them your choice and i think his taking responsibility and being very clear in that where he's like, I'm a coward. I took the coward's way out. It was the wrong thing to do. I take complete responsibility for my part in this to lead you guys to this trial, to Claudia's death. Like, you know, I saved, I was able to save Louis. Like, I think Louis just is like making excuses for it all and be like, he was in a tough spot. There was nothing he could do. He was going to die and we would die. You know, at least he was able to save me sort of thing. He's just justifying in his head. Okay, Armand, I'm going to send a message to you. I'm not a vampire. I'm going to pretend like mm -hmm. I have powers that I can do this. Mm -hmm. You best go and save Louie from this situation that he is now in, locked away. I... Oh, and that box of rocks. Yeah. Stop. That was horrible. Belgium caught the worst stray imaginable in all of this, too, where they were just like, you are sentenced to Belgium. There's like one person out there in Belgium right now that's like, what, what did we do? But the it was just such a terrible fate to leave him. To me, the only way that Louis can kind of start to find his way back here is Armand tries to do something to undo the situation that he put him in. And, you know... What he did was horrible. There's no way or shape or form of getting around that. But him making sure that Louis does not live out eternity locked away in that box, like that would do wonders to a person. That would be like, okay, at the very least, I'm not in that situation now. Yeah, it also depends on how long Louis ends up in that box. Is he released right away? Is he in starvation mode at that point where he just, you know, any kindness is kindness he's going to take? It's just Armand created this situation in yeah. a lot of ways. And then, you know, to come in and be like, oh, I'm going to save you from the situation I made. It's like, <laughs> great, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird position for Louis to find himself in because, yes, there are a lot of things that he did over the course of his vampire life that are against the vampire laws. But at the same time... He was not a vampire setting out to follow those laws. He was not in, you know, the theater of vampires at the time a lot of this stuff was going on. So they're basically expecting him to follow their <laughs> rules even when he wasn't a part of them for some of this. And it's a very complicated situation where they're also serving as this judge and jury for him in a spot where the situation's way more complicated than that. 
Yeah, it's interesting that they are trying to hold him to laws that he didn't know all of them. Like, we're going to talk here about Lestat and a lot of what he said. This was really the first time that we've seen things from his perspective and how he's feeling about things. Yeah, he was following some of the script that was written, but mm. there was a lot of it where he was going off script and really pouring his heartbreak out all over the stage and really talking about things that, you know, some things that Louis wasn't being completely honest about in the interview with Daniel, like what happened when Claudia got turned? Because he told Daniel one story, Lestat told what seems to be the truth on stage where he told Louis what is going to happen to her, why they can't turn a child and, you know, what the consequences of this is going to be. And he begged and begged and begged Lestat to do it anyways. And that's something that he left out of that interview. And he ended up correcting where he was like, listen, Daniel, what I said about it, you need to take that out. This is actually the truth of what happened. I'm really curious about this because Louis, back when he was originally telling this story, like, didn't he also feel like, okay, eventually I'm going to get to this other spot where, you know, I'm telling the story of the vampire trial and then Lestat's going to come in and then Lestat's going to have this point of view. It goes back to this. I don't think that Louis is trying to be an unreliable narrator in his story. If I'm going to tinfoil hat the situation, mm -hmm. I think what goes on with Louis sometimes is in order to get through basically the day, he's telling himself and convincing himself that certain things are true. And it's taking these like shocks to his system to sort of realize that something else may actually be the reality. I don't think that he is consciously lying to Daniel in so much as I think he's just lying to himself. And unless he's confronted with those lies, he's like, oh, that's not right. Something's wrong here. Let's try to fix that. This performance from Sam was so amazing. <laughs> was I mean, cooking. this is the episode that if they're going to submit for Emmys, this is it. Everybody was cooking in this episode. But Sam's whole story about when he brought Louie up and dropped him on purpose to break him, that he was just like, I went through all this time where I just wanted him to love me. He had checked out on me. Like there was nothing I could do. Like I just felt like endless heartbreak and I wanted to hurt him back. And I did this on purpose so that I could break him. And I did break him. And I regretted every second of my life that I did this to him and asking for forgiveness. It, I know Claudia was like, nobody believes you like stop it you've done this a million times where you've done a terrible thing and then come back and be like i'm sorry and then did the terrible thing again I, i'm sorry like you know and she's just like how many sorries can you have but this to me felt very genuine this moment of this is the moment that i regret the most in my life i should have never broken louis in the way that i did he can never come back from it he never did come back from it and that's entirely my fault i do believe lestat and i also believe that claudia doesn't believe lestat as weird as that sounds because yeah. it's sort of a situation where if i'm claudia <laughs> after seeing everything that lestat has said and done and seeing that impact on louis where they're traveling alone for years and louis just shut off from the world i would be so mad at lestat that any single thing that he says i would just <laughs> sit there and you know cover my ears i'm surprised she didn't just sing through the entirety of his speech during this trial like she's just got to be so mad at him for sure i mean how do you accept forgiveness for breaking breaking your soul basically yeah. you know breaking your heart breaking your soul breaking you as a person is there enough stories is there a way that you can say i'm sorry or do you need to find a way to actually make amends where it's not just i'm sorry okay great you're sorry how are you going to make this situation better it's less about your words and more about your actions and you're still sitting here on stage reading this you know play off where you're gonna eventually kill me at the end of it so like are you sorry like uh, are you just trying to unburden yourself so that when i get killed you're like all right i, I did my part i feel good about everything it's just like it's such a complicated situation, and the only person that can really take that apology or not is Louis. Yeah, and Lestat, 
he doesn't see the forest through the tree sometimes. I, I do believe he's sorry. I do believe this is his way of expressing vulnerability, but he's also such a showman. Lestat loves to be up there in front of the lights, being the star. I mean, he's just got such a flair for the dramatic, and I think there's such an appeal to that. And so while he's doing this whole show, I don't know if he's thinking as much as he should be about this is really just about Louie. This isn't about anybody else. Like, I think he's aware of a part of it in his mind, but I also imagine, and I don't know if we're ever going to get this, I want to see the days leading up to this for Lestat, where Lestat's going into this and thinking, okay, this is my moment. This is somebody I haven't seen in years. How am I going to prepare for all of this? Because that sort of psychological unraveling, it's the only way we're actually going to get to the truth about what he was fully thinking about here. And it's such a relatable moment. I think we've all had those moments where it's like, man, if I ever run into this yeah, person again, this is what I'm going to say. And this is how I'm going to say it. And, you know, so for, I would have liked to have seen something like that as well. And I'm sure that Lestat did have that running through his mind, not just for the days before, mm -hmm. but the entire time he was healing from what they did to him to be like, if I ever run into them again, this is how it's going to play out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Madeline here because oh. he was we barely knew you and yet they appealed this character so much to me in a very, very short period of time, mostly in this episode, that moment where she basically refuses to turn against Claudia. They give her a chance to join oh, the coven. She's like, Claudia is my coven. That was one of the best lines of the entire episode. And there were a few just really great lines through all this. So Stat delivered some awesome ones near the end of all of this. You know, Louie talking through his pain. Like there were, there were so many just individual beautiful moments, but the way in which Madeline refuses to turn on Claudia, the punishment begins. Claudia holds Madeline. Madeline starts to fade away first. And it was just, they took their time with this scene in such a way that made it excruciating. But you know what? It was way more excruciating for the characters. I think we can all deal with having to watch this for a couple minutes, even though it was really, really hard. I loved that Claudia just wasn't taking it all the way through. She never wavered. She was like, I'm right. You're wrong. What I did, I did for a reason. I don't regret it. If this is what's going to happen, it's going to happen. And even when the sun is coming in and, you know, her companion is burning away in her arms and she's just like singing the song that she hated for <laughs> this coven that's doing this to her in pure defiance. I just am going to miss this character so much. It's really hard to imagine what Interview with the Vampire is going to be now. And I know yes. that there's a lot more story to tell. I know there's a lot of books out there. They may surprise us in a lot of ways. But you are taking this character out of here who is defiant. a great way to put it because she was always defiant of something throughout the show. No matter what it was, who it was, there's just such an energy about her that was rebellious and at times even fun in a show that can be really dark like some of the funniest <laughs> moments through these first two seasons were all claudia and yeah. now without that we have louis who is constantly in his feelings and haunted mm -hmm. and i mean i'll be honest i know that there are reasons why it happened and story-wise it had to happen but it's still surprising to me as an outsider that oh claudia and Madeline end up getting killed. And Louis, who is actually more responsible than them in a lot of ways for all this, he get, he gets to survive. And sure, I mean, the fate he has is not exactly good. Some people would probably choose what happened to Claudia over it. But I'm still, I'm shocked that he's still alive. Armand, listen, <laughs> like I know that the coven threatened you, yeah. but you did have that dinner alone with them. Could you not have just gotten everybody out at that time? You are an ancient vampire with, you are the most powerful vampire. I understand there's a whole coven of them and they're yeah. all trying to figure it out. But like, it felt like it took a while for them to roll up on that place. Like you couldn't have like, okay, sure, I'll get them to this place and then you can roll up. And But they've already rolled out the back door. You know what I mean? Yes. Like they couldn't have figured another way out. Armand. This is such a cowardly move. I totally think he could have figured another way out of this. And it's, 
the whole thing yeah. where a lot of this show is about insecurity for these vampires. I mean, Lestat clearly has it. Louis yeah. clearly has yes. it. Claudia's gone through it. Armand is clearly, even though he is ancient and powerful, he is so set in his ways and afraid to do anything different. I mean, we saw it being afraid to turn Madeline. Mm -hmm. Here, he's clearly afraid of the coven and afraid of trying to do something different or surprising. I mean... Yeah, sure, theoretically, it's possible that they could track him down some day, but it's a very big world. And at the time period in which this particular story is set, it's a little bit harder to travel around here or there. I think that I think there was another way out of this, even if Armand continues to sort of be like, no, there was no other way. This was the this was the choice that had to be made. No, couldn't the four of them come up with a plan together? And at that point, I know Claudia and Madeline were like, yeah, we want to travel the world and do whatever and figure out where we want to end up. OK, cool. Can we come with you? Because four is better than two and two. So if they do ever hunt us down, there's four of us to deal with the eight of them or 10 of them that together we as a collective may be able to actually deal with this. But no, we're here <laughs> instead. And that is just the biggest problem with Armand. He is so fearful as being as powerful and as ancient vampire as he is, he's so fearful. Even when he met up with Lestat and was like, this is the way, like this is the way that we could actually move the coven. He was afraid to do it himself. So he just let Lestat continue on so that he could introduce the idea. Armand, you deprived us of a really fun show where we could have just watched these four traveling vampires go all yeah. over the world. I'm sure that probably would have found them at some point. There probably would have been a problem. But you know what? I can pretend that there wouldn't be for now in this pretend world that's not even happening. But no, instead, we have the interview going on where, you know, Louis, I think, has more incentive now to air out this vampire dirty laundry than ever. I mean, these people killed Claudia. They took Madeline away. He, mm -hmm. It's very understandable why he may not have that much affection for other vampires at this point. Yeah, I mean, the biggest question here is, and if you've read the books, don't let us yeah. know, but for us is who's actually going to save Louis from this coffin full of rocks? I mean, could Lestat actually go and do that? And they have like whatever discussion they're gonna have and decide to break it off? Or are, cause he's already, Louis already said that Armand saved him. So this could be the save that he's okay with. And then Lestat is able to release him. Or is Armand going to be the person who's going to go in and save him and pull him out of that coffin, out of the rock? So it's like a double save of a situation he created. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be the double save. It, it just to me, that's the only way that Armand and Louis are going to get past this <laughs> is if Armand actually does something big, helps Louis get out of this situation, helps the two of them get far away from this in general and then they can start to rebuild their lives whatever that looks like we know little bits and pieces of it already we already know mm -hmm. san francisco i mean there's probably a lot more story there is to tell there but i will say as much as i want more answers on the telemask of it all what's going on with daniel you know what do they want out of him i was okay with it not being in this episode so much However, I do need answers on this in the finale. I know this was mostly about the trial. I still kind of have to have some sort of closure for the present, guys. Yeah, me, me too. This, like we said at the start, this is not an easy episode to get through. No. I mean, the performances were next level. It's one of the best acted episodes I think we've seen of anything all year long. 10 out of 10 drive up all the Emmys to their houses now. Yeah, I, I just think they did a phenomenal job of creating this world that really felt like we were in that room in the trial watching it happen. It felt like we were watching a play and now we just have to be in our feelings because we're going to miss these characters. Yeah, I mean, they, like I said, I was like, I came out of this episode, I was like, oh, I hate it. Because I just felt like sick to my stomach. Like when they put Claudia in the box with the rats, like I felt nauseous. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this episode. Like I know what's coming, but like this is, this is rough. This is like Game of Thrones level rough. <laughs> of watching things on screen that I just feel like I can't get through, but I got through it. I'm glad I did it is an excellent episode, but yeah, I will never go back and watch this episode again. One time is enough. It was a 10 out of 10. All right. Well, we will be back of course 
to discuss the finale. So hit that subscribe button. Also smash that like button mm -hmm. helps us very, very much. Also, if you want to support us further, join our Patreon. We have a link in the description below. Mm -hmm. We have a live stream happening there Monday night. Interview with the Vampire will be discussed. So be sure to check that out. We don't want you guys to miss it. And thank you to our patrons you. for your support. We'll see you here next time.